This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. This lecture is on uh, risk and uncertainty. I'll say this lecture, I'll probably split it into um, two or three shorter lectures. Uh, but uh, we're going to look at four different techniques you could be examined on. Uh, three of them you should have seen before in the previous financial management exam. Uh, the fourth one uh, wasn't in the previous exam, in fact it's something rather different, it's something called value at risk. However, what we're uh, talking about initially, certainly, um, we've looked at calculating uh, net present values that are praising uh, projects. Uh, but, of course, one huge problem is that all the cash flows we've used are forecasts. Uh, and our forecast may be wrong. Uh, and equally, the cost of capital. Uh, we do all our exercise, but it could be wrong. You know, um, when we actually come to do the project, the cash flows could be different. The cost of capital may turn out to be different. Uh, and it could be, of course, that we've made a bad decision. And so that's what we're looking at, how we can try and deal with that, how we can try and take that into account. Uh, and the first of the uh, standard three areas that you should have seen before is something called sensitivity analysis. Uh, whereas, uh, well, I'll remind you with a small example, um, we try and quantify how big an effect errors in our forecasts uh, uh, how big an effect they're going to cause. Uh, let me explain what I mean with the example. Now, if you look at example one, and there are lots of 15s here, so be careful. Um, a very short little project. Diner has just set up a new company and estimates that the cost of capital is 15%. Our first project involves investing 150000 in equipment with a life of 15 years and a scrap value of 15,000. The equipment will produce 15,000 units a year, generating a contribution of 275 each. And we've estimated there'll be additional extra fixed costs of 15,000 a year. Uh, so a very simple uh, project. All right, in the exam, this would only be, the analysis we're going to do would only be a small part of the question, uh, and the project itself could be a lot more complicated. But however complicated the project flows are, um, this sensitivity analysis we come to um, is always the same approach. However, part A says determine whether the project's worthwhile, so in the normal way, let's calculate the MPB. And this time, well, at time zero, we've got the um, cost of the investment, 150,000. It's going to produce 15,000 units a year with a contribution of 275. And so, rather than, when it's 15 years, we're not going to set up 15 columns. And with an annuity from 1 to 15, we're getting contribution, what is it, uh, 15,000 units, $2.75 each is the contribution, is 41 to 50 per year. We've got extra fixed costs. It's 15,000 a year again for 15 years. Uh, and finally, uh, at the end of the 15 years, it's got scrap value of 15,000. Uh, an inflow. Uh, so there we are, and as I say, um, a very simple project. Cash flows in the exam will be a lot more complicated as we looked at in earlier chapters. But for the exercise here, I'm not concerned. Uh, for part A again, we want, is it worthwhile? So we need to discount. So the present values at, what's the cost of capital? 15%. 
Um, discounting, 150,000 now is 150,000. With then an annuity, an equal amount each year for 15 years. And so using our annuity factors, if I can find them, here they are. Uh, 15 years at 15% is 5.847. So the present value of the contributions to, sorry, let me check, 41,250 times 5.847, yep, 241,189. Uh, we've got the fixed costs. Uh, again, it's 15-year annuity, 15%. So present value there. 87,705. And finally, the scrap proceeds. Um, a one-off flow in 15 years. So the ordinary discount factor. 15 years, 15% 15 is 0.123. And so the present value, 1845. And so the net present value, 241189 plus 18.45. Minus 87,705 minus 150,000 is 5,329 positive. So the MPV is positive. Uh, we would therefore accept that project. But again, the problem is... If any of our estimates are wrong, if the contribution, for example, turned out to be only $2 a unit, the MPV would be a lot lower. And if the MPV were ever negative, it would turn out we'd made the wrong decision. <coughs> well, with sensitivity analysis, uh, what we look at is effectively how much we could afford the item to be wrong by. It's a difficult thing to put in words. But let me show you what I mean, or hopefully remind you what I mean. It says, calculate the sensitivity to change. There's a whole series here. In the exam, you're only asked for one or two, but it could be any of them. But the sensitivity to change is, first of all, the initial investment. Now, OK, this 150,000 is probably the thing we're most certain of, the initial cost, but just suppose we thought the cost would be 150,000, but it might be a bit more. And at the same time, for the moment, let's assume all the other items we are sure about, all we're worried about is the initial cost. Well, at the moment, we think it's 150,000, we get a positive NPV. But how much could the initial cost change by before the MPV became negative? Well, of course, the higher the cost is, assuming again everything else we're sure of, the higher the cost, the lower the MPV will be. And fine, we're still happy to go ahead as long as the MPV is positive, but as soon as it goes negative, we've got a problem. Uh, the break-even, in a sense, is 5329. So how fairly obviously we can afford that cost to increase by anything up to 5329 and still be positive. We've only got a problem if the cost turns out to be higher by more than 5329. And so in percentage terms, what change can we afford? We can afford it to increase by 5329 on an existing 150,000. And so in percentage terms, we're still okay, provided it doesn't increase by more than 5329 divided by 150,000. 
which is 3.55%. And that's the sensitivity. And see what it's getting at. But if I'm unsure about the cost, fine, we're okay, provided it doesn't increase or, or, or we're not wrong by up to 3.55%. And strictly we should put a sign against it because the cost, of course, if the cost is lower, MPV is better and better, no problem. We're only worried if the cost increases. And so the sensitivity it can go up by up to 3.55%. And what's the relevance of it? Well, it tells us how critical this figure is. You see, if the sensitivity was ooh, 30%, our estimate, it doesn't really matter if it's wrong by anything up to 30%. It's very unlikely to be that much wrong. I'm not desperately worried. But on the other hand, if the sensitivity was only 1%, it would mean a tiny error in our estimate of the cost, and we've got a big problem. And so the lower that sensitivity, the more sens the lower the figure, the more sensitive we are, and therefore the more work we do in checking our estimate or in extreme, we might not even bother going at risk going ahead with the project. Anyway, that was a very easy one, I hope a very obvious one. Uh, look at the second one though, the sales volume. Now we did this on the assumption that we were going to sell 15,000 units a year. that each unit was going to generate 275 and therefore, might be an idea if I just check my figure, we were expecting, yes, a contribution of 41,250 a year. Well this time, let's assume we're certain of uh, all our estimates except that sales volume. We think it's 15, but of course it may be higher, it may be lower. Now, if it's higher, no problem. Higher sales volume, more contribution, bigger NPV. But what if it's lower? Well, of course, if the contribution, uh, sorry, if the volume, oh, if it went down by, say, 10%, then okay, the contribution each year would go down by 10%. And if the contribution went down by 10%, well, the present value would go down by 10% as well. To go down by 10% of 241, if you go down by 24,000. Well, I want to know what percent change can we afford before the MPV becomes zero. And again, for every percentage change in the volume, the same percentage change in the contribution, the same percentage change in the present value. How much can I afford the present value to go down by? 5329 to end up with an MPV of zero. And so the percentage change we can afford, the sensitivity of the sales volume, we can afford the MPV to fall by 5329 to get to zero. The current present value of the um, contribution is 241189. And therefore, we can afford a, a drop of the sensitivity. It's 5329 divided by 241189 uh, is 2.21%. And so, all right, you can learn a rule. It's the MPV divided by the present value of whatever it is that's changing. But do see the logic. The more you see the logic, the less learning there is. So you see, if the volume did fall by 2%, the contribution would fall by 2%. So too would the present value of 241. That would fall by 2% as well. And 2% of it, well, the MPV, it would fall by the 5329. 
Uh, again, strictly, we should show a direction. Um, as far as contribution, uh, sorry, as far as, as far as the sales volume is concerned, we're only bothered, only worried if the sales volume falls, and so the sensitivity is minus 2.21%. And again, check you've understood the relevance. Um, the lower the figure, the more sensitive we are. Since the initial investment was fairly um, high at 3%, the sales volume, an even smaller change, uh, would cause us to have made the wrong decision. So the sales volume, it's more sensitive. Well, as I've said, the, um, in the exam, as always, this would only be a small bit added on a much bigger question. And they won't ask you for a whole series of sensitivities like here. But it shouldn't take a moment to do the others. What about the contribution per unit? This time, again, we're assuming everything else is okay. But the contribution of 275 is what we're uncertain of. Well, what would the effect of the contribution changing? If the contribution per unit were to fall by a percent, as similarly like before, the total contribution itself would fall by 1%, and the present value, the 241, would fall by 1%. What fall can we afford in present value? By 329 to get to zero. So again, it's the net present value as a percent of the present value of whatever changes. So the figure that's going to change, the present value is 241189. And so, again, the sensitivity of the contribution, we can afford it to fall by up to 2.21%. All right, just two more. Uh, uh, the fourth one, the fixed costs per annum. I think by now you should be clear what we're doing. It is easy enough. Uh, <coughs> that uh, again, the fixed costs we've estimated at fifteen thousand a year. The present value of them is eighty-seven seven zero five. It's that present value that will change if the fixed costs change, and we can afford a change of five three two nine to end up with an NPV of zero. So as before, it's the MPV 5329 as a percentage of whichever present value changes, fixed costs 87705. So what percentage change 5329 divided by 87705? Uh, 6.08%. Uh, and which direction? Well, uh, costs, of course, we're only worried if they increase. They can increase by up to 6% before we've got a problem. So it's a bit less sensitive. We can allow a bigger change in that than we can accept in the contribution per unit of a volume. Uh, finally, the fifth one. Uh, what about the scrap value? Well, for the last time, remember, we do each in isolation, so we assume everything else we're certain of. The only thing we're unsure about uh, is the scrap. And, of course, if the scrap value falls, the present value of the scrap falls, the MPV will fall. Uh, well, arithmetically, if we do exactly the same as before, um, we can afford the MPV to fall by 5329. Expect it as a percentage of the present value of whatever's changing. 
The present value of the scrap is 1845. So arithmetically, we can afford, afford a fall of Um, 209% a fall. We're only worried if the scrap value falls. However, you use a bit of common sense. In, in any normal situation, uh, it'd be ridiculous to leave it like that. Uh, because in any normal situation, the worst that can happen is the zero scrap value. Um, and if the zero scrap value, NPV falls by 1845, but it's still positive. So in any normal situation, you wouldn't leave 289%. You'd say it's not sensitive at all. I'm not the slightest bit worried about the scrap value. Uh, because again, even if it fell to zero, the project's still worthwhile. The only time there could be any relevance at all of actually leaving a number, it's unlikely. But if it could have been that uh, when we come to scrap, if it could have been the situation that we just might have to pay out money, you know, maybe this machine causes a lot of pollution, and therefore, when we uh, scrap it, we've got to spend money cleaning up, then fair enough, uh, it would effectively mean the scrap value could, could go negative spending money and therefore there might be a relevance in leaving the sensitivity but otherwise um, it, it's completely nonsense so there we are uh, I hope that is easy enough uh, but again I've said two or three times uh, never a full question just on that in the exam that's the problem but you get you know a big 50 mark question a great big, perhaps foreign, uh, net present value calculation, as we went through uh, in one of the earlier lectures. Uh, but then perhaps a little bit added for a few marks, effectively asking what the sensitivity is of one of the factors. Uh, however, the one problem with sensitivity, without repeating everything I've said, is that we, we only look at one item at a time. We look at each one in isolation. So, okay, if the sales volume uh, was uncertain, we can afford a drop of 2%. On the other hand, if the contribution per unit was uncertain, we can afford a drop of 2.21% and so on. But we can only look at one thing in isolation. The problem is that, of course, in real life, they all might change. Uh, they might all change independently. You know, we think sales volume will be 100,000, 15,000 rather. We think contribution will be 275, but they could both change. Or they could be interlinked. You know, it could be that a change in the sales volume is related to a change in the selling price and therefore the contribution. But we're only ever looking at one factor at a time. Uh, well, a way we could deal with that over the page is something called simulation, where you wouldn't be asked any um, calculations, but um, they could just expect you to mention it and be aware of the idea. Uh, and all simulation is, I'm not going to talk through all the individual steps. You can read that yourself. But what it involves, just suppose we have the same question. Uh, there are the um, flows we expect, but we accept. Uh, the initial cost might be higher, it might be lower. The contribution might be higher, might be lower, and so on. What you could do, surely, is set up a spreadsheet showing all the various combinations of things that could happen. You know, maybe I've decided the contribution in the previous one, I think, is 275 a unit, but, oh, it might be only 250, or it might be as high as $3. Now, the sales volume, I think it's going to be um, 
15,000, but maybe it might only be 14. It might, oh, it might be as high as 16. Well, we could set up a spreadsheet showing what would happen if the contribution was 275 and the volume was 15,000. What would happen if the contribution was 250 and the volume 15? The contribution $3, volume 15. And then, okay, what about contribution 275 and volume 14? Or contribution 250 and volume 14? You know, every combination of these um, variables, it's, it would take quite a while to set up, but we could set it all up on a spreadsheet and show every possible combination, every possible NPV that results. And then we could start putting probabilities to it. Well, I think the probability of 275 contribution is 0.5. Maybe there's a 0.1 probability, it could be as low as 250, it'll be a 0.4 probability size 3. Don't worry, you wouldn't have to do this. <coughs> but we could set up all the combinations, calculate the probabilities, and then determine what's the overall probability of the MPV actually being positive. So think about it, but again, don't worry unduly. Uh, the only relevance would be um, in a bit of writing as a way we could attempt to deal with the effect of the uncertainty. All right, finally, of the three <coughs> that are, um, or should be, revision from um, the previous financial management exam, uh, another approach, depending on the information given, will be to use expected values. Uh, something you've been tested on, in fact, in um, the earlier management exam and in the earlier financial management exam. So this shouldn't take me many minutes to remind you. And occasionally, not very often, but it comes up in this exam as a small part of a much bigger question, yet again. Uh, look at example two quickly with me. Diger is considering launching a new product. It will require additional investment of 200,000. The selling price of the uh, product will be $10 a unit. However, as far as the demand is concerned, that's what we're not sure. Uh, the demand might be 50,000 units a year, or it might be further on 20% higher. Further on, it might be 20% lower. Uh, and we are told the probabilities of the demand being 50,000, of it being 20% higher, of it being 20% lower. So how can we cope? Um, you know, we need to set up, it wants the um, net present value. Uh, we need to set up the cash flows. And OK, original, initial investment, no problem, it's there. At the very end, the scrap value, no problem. The problem, of course, is what about the demand? Well, when we know the uh, various outcomes and we know the probabilities, uh, we'll base our decision on the expected, the average. And so let's work out the expected demand What are the possibilities? The demand might be 50,000 units. The probability is 0.5. Uh, however, as a probability 0.4, that it'll be 20% higher than that. Well, 10% of 50 is 10. So the demand might be 60,000. The probability is 0.4. There's a point one probability, it'll be 20% lower. So 20%, again, 10, lower than 50 is 40. Probability point one. So there are the three possible outcomes and the probabilities. 
um, with expected values, where we just take the average, the weighted average, the expected, multiply by the probabilities and add up to get the expected or the average. Uh, 50,000 times 0.5 is 25,000. 60 times 0.4 is 24. Uh, 40 times 0.1 is 4. And so the expected or average, 2549, 53,000 units. And having done that, it then becomes a normal problem and we set up the cash flows in the normal way. Uh, I'll set them up. I'm not going to um, calculate the MPV. You can check at the back. Uh, we've done enough discounting by now. But setting up the flows, the initial investment, an outflow of 200. Uh, we're then going to earn a contribution each year for four years. So for four years, the contribution, well, we're going to use the expected demand of 53,000 units. Now, the contribution is 50% of the selling price. The selling price is $10 a unit. And so the contribution will be 50% of $10, uh, meaning a total contribution of 265000 per year. Uh, what else we expect? Uh, there the to be extra fixed overheads. So again, for four years, the fixed overheads an extra 140,000 a year. Uh, and finally, the scrap value in four years' time, 50,000. Now, I said I wouldn't discount, but why not? It only takes two seconds. If I can find my tables. Ooh, where are they? Here we are. Uh, the cost of capital here is 20%. 200,000 is 200,000. Uh, the contribution, it's a four year annuity, so the 20% uh, annuity factor for four years is 2.589. And of course, the same factor for the fixed. You could just put the net figure in. Uh, but the contribution 265,000 times 2.589 is 686085. The fixed overhead 140,000 times 2.589 362460. And finally, the scrap 50,000, a one off flow and so the ordinary present value factor four years at 20% is 0.482. So the present value of the scrap uh, 24,100 and therefore the NPV finally 686085 minus 362460 24,100 minus 200,000. I hope I'm right. You can check with the back end. Uh, the answers at the back anyway. It's positive 147725. So we go ahead. There is the expected net present value. Uh, the problem, of course, before I leave it, the problem is that, all right, there's sort of your average. But we already know uh, the demand might turn out to be lower. And if the demand turns out to be lower, it's lower and the MPV is lower. If demand turns out to be higher, it's higher and the MPV is higher. You know? um, so it's not going to be at 147725 unless, of course, Remember, this is four years. If year by year, 
Five years out of ten, it was 50,000. Four years out of ten, it was uh, demand was 60,000. One year out of ten, it was... If it was changing each year and the probabilities were right, then we would end up with that MPV. Uh, but if the demand was lower every year or demand was higher every year, then, of course, we're not going to get that at all. But that's a standard problem in expected values. And it's only for a second, thinking back to simulation. You see, with simulation, we'd calculate the MPV for every possible combination. I mean, here there are only the three, but we would calculate three MPVs. But then with other things were changing, we'd end up calculating more and more MPVs and then working out an overall probability, uh, probability of getting a positive MPV. Uh, anyway, I'll leave that there. Those three things we've discussed, uh, expected value, simulation, sensitivity, they really should have been revision. The last thing in this chapter, though, is something rather different. It seems sensible to put in the same chapter, but um, it is actually completely different. Uh, and it's certainly there's something new in that it wasn't asked in the previous financial management exam. So, uh, I will lecture it, but it'll be in part two. The next lecture, I'll go through and explain what we mean by value at risk.